Money Moves is brought to you by 274 Investment Managers. And tonight, we discuss the challenges of starting a business. There are several risks to be considered because less than four new businesses out of 10 are likely to survive beyond the first year. Now there's something called the lean startup method that is regarded as a good alternative to the normal traditional ways of starting a business. And to discuss that, I'm joined by Khie Khie van Royen, Deputy Editor, Entrepreneur Magazine. Khie Khie, pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much for having me. And of course, before we talk investments, uh, which is the whole point of mm -hmm. this slot, there is also uh, the, no, the idea, you have to make money. That's where I'm exactly. going, all right? You've got to be entrepreneurial if you're not, um, a professional or somebody who believes that you can make money just out of investment. So yes. let's start where we should start. Hmm. Enterprise is the way to go, isn't it? It is, absolutely. And uh, if you want to create jobs, that's another f form and most useful way of creating employment. Absolutely. But not everybody succeeds and survives in the hmm. first year. Let me just uh, check the number. How many businesses are likely to survive beyond the first year? About 80% are likely to fail, so they fail quickly and they yeah. fail horribly and that's yes. where the problem comes in. Right. Having an idea is one thing but actually following through and having a company that exists a year down the line, five years down the line, yeah. ten years down the line, that's the aim but it's, it's tough to do. Yeah, but now people believe, many I've heard, that if you say you are into business, you go into businesses by merely registering a company and that everything will fall into place. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't. That's the problem. Right. Now let's look at the reason why the 80% businesses fail after just a year of existence. Why is that, do you think? I think the reality of it is a lot of ideas fail and it's just a practical reality that you've got to deal with. Even an established company, they're lucky if one out of 10 ideas that they have work. Mm. Now, if you're a massive company like Google, for instance, yes. you can survive. You have one product that doesn't do well, it goes on. But if you're launching a company and you've got one idea, if that idea doesn't work, that product doesn't sell, mm. then the company disappears. Mm. So now the lean start method, well, how different is it from the way businesses are started or founded? It's very different. So the traditional way of looking at doing business, at starting a business, is sort of doing what a big company does on a smaller scale. So it's that typical thing of you register your company, mm. you put all your money into the idea, you create your product, you spend a year doing your logo, developing your website, creating your product, and then you launch it to the world and you're ready to start doing business. Mm. And that is what a lot of small companies try to do because that's what big companies do, mm. like Apple or Google or that yeah. sort of thing. If you look at Apple, for instance, they might be busy with their iPhone 7 at the moment and they know that it's going to sell because the previous six have sold. Yes. They've got a product with a guaranteed success. Yes. People are going to be queuing around the, the block to get into an iStore store and buy one. Sure. Now, that's the wrong way to go about it if you're just starting because you don't actually know if there is demand for your product. Yes. So you can't just sort of lock yourself in your garage, work on your product for five years, spend hundreds or millions of rands mm -hmm. and then say, okay, here's my product. And that's where the lean startup method comes in. It's a completely different way of starting a business. So what it basically means is you look for the customer first. Mm. It's called evidence-based entrepreneurship. Mm. So you start off with a hypothesis. I have this product and I think people are going to like it. So before you do anything else, before you create the business plan, you create the company, anything like that, you actually go out there and you talk to people. Mm. And that's the focus of it. And it's difficult because you're really putting yourself out there. It demands of you to literally go to a shopping mall mm. with your clipboard in hand and speaking to 60 people and say, listen, I've got this idea for a business. What do you think? Does this seem like something you actually want? Ask them if they'll give you your, give them your email address. Because if they show like they have really have interest in it, then you know, okay, I've got a product that maybe could work. So before you spend all that money, you fail very quickly. Yes. Because you go out there and within a day, you know, all right, this idea is not working. Mm. I need to try something mm. else. Mm. I'm with you because, you know, when, when, when people think of starting a business, you adopt the posture, the attitude of an already established business. That if people are buying from somebody, yes. therefore they're going to buy from me. Absolutely. Even if you're coming up with a unique service or mm. product that may not be there in the market, but you haven't tested the market yet, That's right? The so the, the lean uh, uh, start method means 
go and test the market first. Find out. Exactly. Find out if people will be interested in what you're doing. There's the saying by one of the founders of the Lean Startup Method, uh, Steve Blank, who says no business plan survives first contact with a customer because you just don't really know what the customer yes. wants. And that's the problem. People start marketing too late. You almost need to start marketing before you have your product because then you know, is there a demand for it? That's why a good way that a lot of companies are approaching this is by saying, creating a simple website and saying, we've got an idea, this is what it is, and if you sound interested in it, sign up, there's a newsletter, you can put your email address in and that's it. Mm -hmm. So just to really start with the customer and find out, I've got this business idea, uh, can it work? Because a lot of people, I think, make the mistake, they think they're starting a business, but you're not really starting a business. You're starting a startup, and a startup is not the same thing as a business. Yes. A business has customers, a startup doesn't yet. So you're actually searching for a business model and looking for a way to start a business. Well, the marketing and creating and discovering whether there is a market for your product is one thing, but there are other challenges. Let's talk about some of the risks that go with starting your own business that the lean uh, startup method can help address. So another one is the investment. So obviously there's a lot of money that often needs to go into an idea. Mm. And I think there's this kind of warped perception of reality for a lot of people because you see what's happening in Silicon Valley where companies like Uber are getting eight billion worth of investment mm. and that sort of thing. And that's not a, a reality here. In fact, it's not really a reality anywhere other than Silicon Valley. So a lot of people overextend themselves and they try and spend too much money. Mm. And then you sit with a product that actually no one wants. So Another way that the Lean Startup Method tries to deal with this is what it calls a MVP, a Minimum Viable Product. So you don't start off with the most complicated, uh, fanciest product that you've got out there. Say, for instance, you want to build some kind of app or something like that. Mm -hmm. What you do is you start off by creating the simplest version of it that is just good enough to get by. Mm -hmm. And if there's a need for that and people are buying it, you know, okay, I've got something in, I've got something to build on. Yes. And then from there you start investing more because you know you've got cash flow, mm. there's revenue coming in, but you don't spend all your money up front and just hope that people will buy it. Well, you've just mentioned cash flow and uh, to my mind it appears to be the main killer, the main Absolutely. destroyer of uh, emerging businesses, right? Absolutely. So tell me more about uh, the management of cash flow. Cash flow is, is one of the things, it's, it's so important and people often don't understand what it's all about, where all the money goes it disappears so quickly that you might think, okay, I'm starting with a million or two million in the bank, but before you know it, that's dwindled down to nothing. So some basic knowledge around accounting and just managing your money is so important because a lot of entrepreneurs are big thinking ideas people and they don't really like dealing with the small little nitty gritty yes. details of accounting, but it's so important. So we often say, uh, the best founders come in teams because you might have one person who's the, the idea guy, yes. the one who wants to drive the innovation, but you need someone to counterbalance that and to say, that's a great idea, but it's too expensive, we can't do that. So you really need someone in the business who's keeping an eye on the money mm. and making sure that it's coming in and going out and knowing what's happening. Now, as we conclude, just uh, take me through the ABC of the Lean Startup Method. Okay, so basically what you start with is you have your idea, whatever your big idea is for. It could be an app, it could be anything. It could even be a restaurant. It doesn't have to be technology driven mm, at all. It's, mm. it's true for any business. Mm. So you literally go out there with a clipboard to a public place, a place where people wouldn't mind interacting with you. A good example that they often give is an airport because mm. everyone's sitting around waiting. Mm. And you approach people and you just be honest with them, be frank and say, I've got this business idea, I don't know if it's gonna work. Mm. And really just talk to people and find out if they're interested in mm. it. And that's the first start. Once you've got maybe 100 people who've given you their email address and they're really interested in it, you know you've got a business idea. Mm. Then from there, you start working on the actual idea, creating that MVP, the minimum viable product. Mm. And then from there, you slowly build your business, but it's a process of adapting. So you're never kind of done with the products built and ready and now I'm putting it on the shelf and selling. You're uh, going out, speaking to customers, building something, putting it out there, seeing what they're buying, what do they like, don't they like, and you iterate and you change and you pivot and adapt and slowly create a product that, that people really want.
So just in conclusion, from your experience uh, interacting with, with entrepreneurs the whole time, at what point can a startup type entre entrepreneur know that this is working now, this is the way to go? What should you look out for in that regard? It's very tough to say. Uh, they say, they speak of the, the look of the cookie monster. The people must have that real hunger for your product. Yes. A good way to look at it is, has people actively try and find a solution for what you're offering? Mm. And have they spent money? That's really where you know you've got an idea that works. People are actively spending money and looking for a solution and nothing's really satisfying mm. it. And that's where you find something that you know, okay, I've got an idea here that could really work. And it's, it's all about that traction and gaining momentum. And success doesn't come overnight. And there are pitfalls. But you just have to kind of keep plugging at it, improving at it, and it's always a roller coaster entrepreneurship. Sure. I think even five years down the line, it could disappear. You still have to <laughs> got things to sort out. <laughs> Absolutely. But anyway, here, here, much appreciated. Thank Thanks you so for much. paying us a visit. It was a pleasure. And of course, we will be learning more things from you and your publication going forward. And good luck to you and your colleagues at Entrepreneur Magazine. Thank you so much. Well, that's uh, here, here von Royen, who is the deputy editor of Entrepreneur Magazine and talking to us about the Lean Startup Method and giving us tips on how you too can make money if you are the enterprising kind. And uh, this interview was brought to you on Money Moves by 27.4 Investment Managers. Mm -hmm.